Amen. Thank you, Jamie. Good morning. My name's Wayne Raz, and I'm the pastor here at uh, Lovely Lane Chapel. We are so glad that you decided to come and worship with us this morning. We have a tradition here at the chapel. We like to ask our out-of-town guests, uh, especially if they're with a group, if someone will tell us who they are and where you're from so that we can get to know you. And uh, I'm going to start with our Birmingham group. Who wants to speak? Go ahead. Well, thank you for coming, and good to have y'all with us. And and there's one of the men uh, in the stained glass window is Francis Asbury. So uh, y'all can look at that on your way out. Uh, are there any other out of town uh, guests on this side of the uh, chapel? Okay, how about on this side? We're the Ballards from Holston Conference. Uh, Asbury came through Holston many, many times. And so we feel kinship with uh, all who are here this morning. Wonderful. Uh, glad to be here. Amen. Good to have y'all with us. Anyone else on this side? Yes. Wonderful. Glad to have y'all with us. Anybody else? Okay. I'm going to take a picture because this is so good to see um, all of you here this morning that um, I think I want to uh, share it. All right. Everybody say, Dice Queso. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, let's go to God in prayer. Dear God, thank you for this beautiful morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you for gathering all of us here today to worship you. Focus our hearts and minds that we will experience you, the risen, resurrected Lord, in a real and personal way this morning, that we will not be able to leave the same as we entered because we've been in the presence of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. Lord, I know that we come with different burdens and joys on our hearts and minds, but you're here to meet each of us, to minister to us in just the way that we need it today. And so, Lord, as we worship you, Focus everything that is done on you and you alone. And it is with confidence of children of God that we're able to say the prayer that you taught your disciples, say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Will you join as we sing number 473? My faith looks up to thee. I think. Uh, nope, I'm sorry. I got the wrong number. Let me see which one it is. 450? 452. 452, thank you. And let us stand as we're able to sing. We'll sing verses 1, 2, and 4.
affirm our faith with the historic confession, the Apostles' Creed, which is found on page 881 of your hymnal. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born under the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and dead. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence you shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Before you're seated, would you just turn and greet everyone in the name of Jesus? may be seated. Would our ushers please come forward?
Thank you. You may be seated. Our scripture this morning comes from 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 8 through 15. Always remember that Jesus Christ, a descendant of King David, was raised from the dead. This is the good news I preach. And because I preach this good news, I am suffering and have been chained like a criminal. But the word of God cannot be chained. So I am willing to endure anything if it will bring salvation and eternal glory to Christ Jesus, to those God has chosen. This is a trustworthy saying. If we die with him, we will also live with him. If we endure hardship, we will reign with him. If we deny him, he will deny us. If we are unfaithful, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny who he is. Remind everyone about these things and command them in God's presence to stop fighting over words. Such arguments are useless, and they can ruin those who hear them. Work hard so you can present yourself to God and receive his approval. Be a good worker, one who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly explains the word of truth. Will you pray with me? Oh God, no one needs to hear my words this morning. For they are meaningless. But Lord, we all here need to hear your word. So let everything that is said and done be of and about and from you and you alone. In Jesus' name and in Jesus' power. Amen. This is a passage that Paul, the Apostle Paul, was writing to his protege, Timothy. And the mentor, Paul, was giving his mentee, Timothy, a lesson in how to be a faithful disciple and a leader. And Paul here is actually rehearsing or retelling, restating his faith and restating the gospel that he has proclaimed his whole life that since he was changed on that road to Damascus. It is presented as, as instruction for Timothy. Remember Jesus Christ, he writes. And in a way, Paul is doing this as a reminder of what is important to him in his faith. It might be considered a creed, like we just said the Apostles' Creed, that this is what Paul believed about Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, a descendant of David. It's the gospel, the truth of Jesus Christ in a miniature statement. How would you sum up your faith in a creedal statement? What are the foundational statements that gives your life meaning and direction and purpose. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born under the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. That's what we recited. That's what we said with the Apostles' Creed. The question is, do we really believe what we're saying? Is it our gospel? Is it your gospel? If not, what do we hold fast to as 
undeniable truth of your faith or of my faith? Well, I can just tell you for me, it boils down to about four things. God is God and I am not. That's first. That's my number one. I'll tell you why. Because a lot of times I try to be God and tell God what I want instead of asking God what he wants. And I have to remind myself that God is God and I'm not. Number two, Jesus Christ was born. He suffered. He died. And he was raised from the dead. Number three, we serve a God of forgiveness, gracious and merciful, slow to become angry, and rich in unfailing love. God of grace and God of glory. And lastly, I have been saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. These are the essentials to me in my creed, in my gospel of truth about faith in Jesus Christ. And in a way, this passage has an inward and an outward aspect. The inward aspect is proclaiming what I truly believe and what Paul believed. The statement of faith. Or a creed represents that inward dimension. What it is that, that defines us as followers of Jesus Christ, as disciples. But there's also an outward dimension. And how do we represent that outward focus? Paul says, present yourself. Present yourself. Show yourself to be a good worker to be approved how do we present ourselves as living out our faith so that others can see that this week I had a conversation with one of our uh, regulars here at Lovely Lane who has not been able to be with us for several months and now years because his wife is, is suffering and he is her primary caretaker. And he came by and we had a good conversation um, and Charlie Crawley told me that he has, he has received so much kindness and he has received so much love for he and Susan during her illness that it's overwhelms him sometimes. In fact, he mentioned that some of our other regulars have been very kind to them and had purchased gift cards so that they could go to a restaurant and he could get food and bring it back and, and feed Susan in this time. And what a help that was because it did two things. It, it helped them with the convenience of, of being able to just go and get some good food and leave the gift card and go home and, and take care of Susan, but also to let Susan know that others did this for her and for Charlie as a show of their love, as a witness to their faith. I was... I was just so moved when Charlie told me that. But that's living out your faith. Sharing with others. Being kind. Tender hearted. Merciful. Loving kindness. Now I can tell you in my faith. There's a lot of times that I don't live up. To what I say I believe. But in Paul's confession here. 
there is room for failure. If we are unfaithful, guess what? If I am unfaithful, Christ remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. And that implies that when faithlessness passes and faith is picked up again, Christ will continue to walk in faith with me and with you. There is comfort even in our failures because Christ is victorious. Paul ends this passage, work hard so you can present yourself to God and receive his approval. Be a good worker, one who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly explains the word of truth. So what is it that we should go and do? Well, we need to know what we truly believe, what's essential to our faith that inward expression, but we also need to show how that faith is lived out. It's called living life. You see, our spirituality, our faith, does not end at the worship service. It begins as we go out and share that faith with others to show the love of Jesus Christ. Do your best to let the light within you shine forth Present yourself with the best that God has placed within you. Present yourself to God by loving the ones God came to love and walk among. Present yourself to God by letting every word from your lips be words of praise and invitation. Present yourself to God with joy in every circumstance. Present yourself to God. There's a song that uh, Bill and Gloria Gaither wrote. And the chorus kind of is a summation. <laughs> because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future and life is worth the living just because he lives. You see, I think that's the crux of it. And life is worth the living just because he lives. So I want to extend an invitation to you this morning. What do you believe? What is the essentials of your faith? And what do you want to show and tell others about the love of Jesus Christ? That they will be drawn to his irresistible love because of what you say and do. And life is worth the living just because he lives. So go and tell their people.